God is a great God is a magnificent God he deserves our praise and our worship he deserves to be lifted up high above this earth he deserves all the sacrifices that you have made this morning some of you had made some sacrifice this morning and he deserved it he's worthy of every minute of it because he's highly exalted and there is none like him none to be compared unto him He's the Lord of hosts. The Bible said he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. How great is his name. He's highly exalted. So let us worship our God. Let us not be spectators. Let us not stand and look around. Even if you have to close your eyes and think about him. How good he is. How faithful he is. How merciful and compassionate he is. Here we are in the house of God. And we are about to worship him. Father, you are exalted. You are a precious God, a wonderful God. We are here because of you. It's nothing good that we have done. It's just the grace and the mercy of God why we are here. We love you. We appreciate you. We are grateful to you for everything that you have done. You have done it. You have keeping us and keeping us alive. And we are just going to worship you this morning. We are here to invite your presence. Your presence is ever here. There's not a moment that you're not here, our Father. And we are just here to bow before you in honor. Bow in respect. Bow to glorify you, Jesus. And we are just saying, God, have your way among us here this morning as we pray we have some prayer requests here uh, this one said pray for Mr. and Mrs. Brown they have foot problem and Mr. Brown is not saved um, you have this lady now she named Michelle she has some blood count problem and blood clot um, Sister Marjorie is asking for prayer, just to pray for her, Sister Marjorie. Um, Maxine, have Maxine Walker from New York has COVID-19 and needs prayer. Um, Novlet Joseph have some back pain. Uh, you have Sister Russell who have some lung, have a young, lungs problem and. Sister Lorna Barrett, not feeling well in her body. So these are the requests that we get. And this is nothing for God. God is 
in control of everything. The scripture said he rule it in the kingdom of men. It doesn't matter what is going on in our world. It doesn't mean that our God is not in control. He has never lost control. He's the creator. He's God. He sits high and he look at low. We serve a magnificent God and we just want to really pray about this. You know, pray and ask the Lord. Because basically what is on this is sickness. So we're going to target sickness. Even some of our brethren here are not feeling well, but they are here. And we're going to put this before God. God decide what he wants to do with this. Because sometimes God puts through some things to bring us to a place. To bring him closer to him. So we're going to pray. So let us all pray right now. Just pray for sickness in the body. And pray, God, that the service will go according to God's plan. Because it's his service. It's about him. It wallets around him. So we're just asking him to just take control, take lead, take charge. And minister to the souls of men. Minister to the mind of the people that are here. Some of us are smiling but broken on the inside. Need to be touched by God. Some of us need a fresh touch and a fresh anointing. Some of us have yokes that need to be broken. You know, some of us are troubled in our spirit. But let us put everything to God. His children, his servants, service, and the sickness within the body. Let us all pray right now. Father, in your name, we come one more time. You are God and God alone. You are highly exalted among us and is given a name that is above every name. Father, we approach you right now, mighty God, for your love and mercy and compassion towards each and every one of us. Father, I'm asking you, oh God, we're asking you to take charge of this service. This service is yours. It's all about you. It's, it's just you, God. And we're just saying, take charge. Take lead. Take up preeminence, mighty God, and have your way in this place. Father God, we subject everything to you, this service, mighty God. And we're just asking you, Lord God, to have your way. Minister to the souls of men in this place in the name of Jesus. We're asking you to touch their mind, mighty God. We're asking you for healing, spiritual healing and physical healing, mighty God. We're asking you in the name of Jesus. How call you, Lord? We're asking you to touch each and every one of us in a special way this morning. You are God in charge of this house, mighty God. This is the house of God. And there is a lot of liberty in this place this morning. And we're just asking you right now, oh God, to touch each one in a special way, mighty God. You know her heart and mind. You know the desire that deep within us, mighty God. And you are able to supply our needs according to your riches in glory. Father God, we're asking you to have your way right now. Remember those that are sick within their body. Lungs, blood clot, COVID-19, all these kind of a disease and viruses. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are praying that you will stretch forth your hands right now. And bring about deliverance and healing, mighty God, according to your will and purposes. Father, you are God alone. Hallelujah. We magnify you because there is none like you, King Jesus. Hey, glory, hallelujah. We are asking you, mighty God. Let your will be done right now. It's about you. It's about giving you the glory. The Bible said in you we live and move and have our being mighty God. He said uh, the, the old duty of men is to serve you. Here we are in your presence. Here we are to exalt you. Here we are to lay aside all that is happening within our lives. Just to focus upon worshipping you. You are God alone. You are God alone. And there is none else. There is none beside you. You are the sovereign Lord of the universe. You are the great I am. You are our shield and our buckler. Our defense in the name of Jesus. 
We're just asking you to do what you will among us this morning. Do what brings you glory. Do what brings you honor. It's about you, Jesus. We're asking you to have your way. It's all about you. We love you. We appreciate you. We are grateful to you for everything that you have done. You're my everything. You're my Lord. You're my Savior. You're my Redeemer. I love you, my Father. I love you. I respect you. And I honor you, Jesus. God, have your way right now. Come among us. Dwell with us. Sit and dine with us. Reason with us and minister to us. As we give you the glory, mighty God. Have your way in this place right now. We worship you, O oh God. We lift you up. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Lift up his name. Lift him up, man. He's high and lifted up. He's a blessed savior. He's a blessed savior. It doesn't matter what is going on. He's your savior. Hallelujah to our God. Hallelujah to our Redeemer. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Surrender your heart right now unto him. Subject yourself unto him. Submit unto him. Submit unto his word. And let God have his way in your life. Right now in Jesus name. We're going to read Isaiah 45. God is God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 45. If you found it, say amen. He said, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings, to open before him the two leaves gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked place straight. I will break in peace the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of the secret place that thou mayst know that I the Lord which call thee by thy name am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel my elect I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else, and there is none, no God beside me. I gird thee, though thou hast not known me. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. High form the light. High create and created darkness. High make peace and created evil. High the Lord do all these things. Drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the hurt open and let them bring forth salvation. And let righteousness spring up together. High the Lord have created it. Ho unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the pastured strive with the pastured of the hurt. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou? Or why are thy work? He had no hands. He said, Ho unto him that saint unto his father, What begest thou? Or to the woman, What hast thou brought forth? Thus saint the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, ask me, of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands command ye me I have made the hurt and created man upon it high even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their host have I commanded I have raised him up in righteousness and I will direct all his ways he shall build my city 
and he shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia, of the sea beans, men, statue, shall come over unto thee, and, shall, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains. They shall come over. They shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verily thou art God, that hideth thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded, all of them. They shall go confusion, go to confusion together that the makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. God is a good God. He is worthy. Just to lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands up in the presence of the King here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall all rise to meet him. Hallelujah. Let me see the hands of all those that are looking forward to that day. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and then we shall all be caught up to meet him. Hallelujah. I have that marriage supper somewhere up in the sky. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, let me hear somebody praise him. Come on, if the, if the mass is restricting, let's move the mass temporarily and shout a praise of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and give God a glory praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning, 
Come on, look across to your neighbor and just give them a warm welcome. Tell them how glad you are to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Greet somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can I invite everybody just to clap your hands to the living God this morning? Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise belongs to God. Praise belongs to God. And every time we get a chance to come into the house of the Lord, Bible says we must enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. We must be thankful unto him and bless his name. Because listen, we, we did not have to be here this morning. But thanks be to God. We have all our members intact. We can walk, we can talk, we can sing, we can jump, we can shout. So why not just use our energy here this morning and give God everything in worship. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Song says one more time, one more time. Every time I get a chance to praise him, I'm going to praise him. We're one gonna... more time, one more time. Come on, put your hands together and see it. One more time, one more time. I'm glad to be God's servant. One more time. Oh, some prayer. I'm glad to be God's servant. One more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. Put your hands again. One more time. One more time. I'm glad to be God's servant. One more time. Oh, I'm glad to be God's servant. One more time. Say one more time. One more time, 
give a little song that I love. Hallelujah. It's, it's, if you're standing on the solid rock, and if you know the power that you've got, hallelujah, let me see the hands of all the apostolics that are in the house today. Come on, let me see the hands of all those that know you've got power. Anointing power. And there's no spirit in hell that can withstand against a church that's got power. Hallelujah. Raise that one for me. Well, if you're standing on the solid rock mm. and you know the power that you've got, go. Oh. Satan, you can't prepare. Satan, you can't prepare. Well, if you're standing on the solid rock and you know the power that you've got, you can say, Satan, you can't prepare. Satan, you can't prepare. Man, I, I, I feel like somebody is going to just wage war here today. And you're not afraid of no enemy. You're not afraid of nobody. Mm. Anybody have problems? Anybody have any issues dealing with? You know, 
devil won't go work tomorrow. All right, watch me now. Listen. We're going to take control of our situation this morning. When our apostolic Pentecostal power service. And this is the service that must change and transform things in our lives. Come on, we are warriors. We are powerful people. But guess what? We must know how to use the weapons of our warfare. Not carnal, but what might is you. Come on, what's up? I'm going to pull down some strongholds. Come on, think about every situation that's going on wrong in your life right now. And I want you to do this. Pull it down. Come on, pull it down. If it's a boss giving the issue, pull it down. If it's a sickness in the body, I pull it down. Woo. I'm going to pull down. I'm going to pull down. Financial problem, I pull it down. Health crisis, I pull it down. Family issues, I pull it down in the name of Jesus. Come on, no weapons gonna form against me. They're gonna prosper because I'm a warrior, I'm a soldier. They gotta keep on the firing line. That's the one, too.
Somebody said, if you ever know what I'm going through, I don't know who's saying it, but if you ever know what I am dealing with, somebody saying that, listen, we don't have to know. Make sure you get your victory here today. Make sure that you claim your victory here today. It belongs to you. You want to sit? You can be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Bailey. Minister Marjo, we have announcements. We have things like announcements. 
Whether you have a name, you're going to come greet. You're going to give an announcement. Then we're going to collect the offering. And then we're going to do something special later on in the service. Come with the Everton. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord one more time. You know, I feel victory in my spirit. What? I feel victory in my spirit. Oh, Lord Jesus. Tell brother Carlton, another draft is something else. Amen, 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 amen. Really trying to restrain myself, you know. The song says, over all the power of darkness. Oh, Jesus. Victory. Jesus. Before you sing it, look here, I'm trying to restrain myself. <laughs> I'm here to greet. Amen, amen, amen. Do we have any visitors in our midst? Any visitor? First, second, third time visitor? Let me see you wave your hands. All right, let me ask you to stand so we can identify you a little bit better. You're visiting, you're not a member. Amen, amen. Church, put your hands together for our visitors. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I see you around the back there. Amen. I see you around the back there. Just remain standing. Look here. We are so appreciative of the fact that you took the time out. Come under all this heat and just willing to pour out everything and just worship God with us. You might not understand everything that is happening in the service, but if the moderator says, lift your hands, lift your hands. And if the moderator don't say, lift your hands, and you feel like to lift your hands, lift your hands. You know, I believe that today is a special day because God had designed this day from before time began that you might be in the house. Listen, God richly bless each and every one of you. Thank you for coming out. And I pray that this will not be the first or second or only time, but that you will make coming in the house of God a way of life. God bless you in Jesus' name. To those who are streaming online, we greet you in Jesus' name. Look here. Enjoy the service in your house. Worship God in your house. Walk up and down in your kitchen. Hallelujah. Claim your victory in your kitchen. Claim your victory in your living room. Listen. There's a blessing with your name written on it. And if you're not able to come in the, the service because of the protocols, if you're streaming from overseas, look here. You never do a, best, a better thing than to come and stream and worship God with us. We say, God richly bless you. Thank you for tuning in. You could have been on any other website, but you come to worship God with us. And for that, we are appreciative, and we pray that God will pour you out a blessing. Amen. Lift your hands and worship the Lord again, somebody. Amen, amen, amen. We'll be interjecting in a small part of our service today. You know, just to remember our sister, Sister Marlene Ebert, as you know, she has passed off a couple of weeks ago, and we want to, you know, just remember her. You know, she was a sister, a child of God, and she worshipped God among us. And some might not know her because she has been out for a while, but, you know, we want to remember her in service today. Amen. There will be, for announcement, there will be a prayer meeting this Saturday morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. for all missions worker. So whether you are part of home Bible study, hospital ministry, irrespective of the ministry, there is a prayer meeting and I want every person that is involved in mission to come out and to seek the face of the Lord, to ask for direction as it pertains to winning of soul. Is there a sister Debbie here? Sister Debbie? Amen. Bishop, Bishop wants us to specially acknowledge you. You know, he said that he will get in touch with you. You know, he just could not be here today. Look here. God richly bless each and every one of us as saints. Just lift your hands one more time. Give me that song now. Give me that song now. Amen. Let us stand together one more time and just worship the Lord in Jesus' name. Victory! Victory over all the powers of darkness. Victory. Oh, when the battle is in our way, heaven's grace shall never fail. God will fight for those who pray. Victory. Oh, victory. Victory. Over all the powers of darkness. Victory.
Thank you, prison worship singers. Hallelujah. 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 Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Come on. If you know you've got victory, praise the Lord. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So good to see Sister Grizzle out today. Can we just praise the Lord for Sister Grizzle? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite just about now our ushers to come. I want you to just collect our, our offering today. The Sister Nikisha, our director, is just going to take charge while the offering is collected. I don't, I don't know what you have planned, but you take charge. Praise God. Praise God. All right, let me just ask everyone to just bow your head as I pray for the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, Lord, today. There is none like you, Lord, none to be compared to you. Thou art God and God alone. Father, here we stand, Lord Jesus Christ, one more time in your presence. As we send the ushers forward to collect a small portion of what you have blessed us with in finances, we ask God that you will sanctify and bless it. Use it, Lord God, for whatever you, you know, Lord God, is needed in your kingdom. We pray, Lord God, it will go directly towards the furtherance of this gospel. And the souls and hearts of men will be blessed through the ministry of this church. We ask, oh God, hallelujah, that you just continue to bless your people to give. Hallelujah. And those that have not blessed them the same, we ask all these mercies right now as we pray for the offering which we are about to give in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Praise God. Jesus' blood and his righteousness. 
Minister Martin to come. Everybody stand to your feet and lift your hands. Come on, lift your voice and say, You are great. what I feel this morning. I love what I feel. I'm reminded of the scripture in Acts where the Bible says others were mocking saying that these men are full of new wine. And the Bible said Peter standing up with the eleven. He says these men are not drunken as he suppose. See they was the third hour of the day. But this is that hallelujah which was spoken by the prophet joel I, f I love what i feel i love what i feel this is that that's the promise the holy ghost hallelujah hallelujah one last time lift your hands everybody in the presence of the king in the presence of the king in the presence of the king hallelujah to the king hallelujah to the king hallelujah to the king Hallelujah. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. To you, O King. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Can we just one last time? Can we just whisper the name of Jesus one time? Hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God. Jesus. Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, you may be seated, you may be seated, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are here. Well, I'm here to, and we're here to honor the life of our dear sister, Marlene Hibbert. Amen. You know, the, 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 the thing about the sister, in my opinion, is that she has, she's she's a faithful person she has always been faithful persons who know her know that she's faithful to the house of god she's faithful to the things of god you know even a few weeks before she passed i remember talking to her on the phone and she was still in tune with every single service she don't miss none some of us have our health and strength and all of this and we're we we we, we find it hard but she don't miss none 
and I look and I look at the fact and I say, God, you know, I don't know about you, but if you don't realize since last year, the end part of the year, a few of our saints have been going home. And people might uh, were asking the question, God, what is happening? But the truth of the matter is, God didn't promise any of, any of us a safe passage through in the sense that we're going to necessarily make it through to the, I'll be alive when the rapture comes. And as I think about that, I'm reminded of the church of Corinth and, and the church in Thessalonica. Both churches had the same issue. They, were, they expected God to come back during their time. And after a while, the saints were dying out. They were dying out. So they start to get worried because God had promised that he's going to come back. Yeah? And now people are dying. But Paul made a profound statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of men most miserable. Amen. And therefore, we are happy that our hope doesn't lie in this life only. The trouble is going to be there. The problem is going to be there. The isms going to be there. The issues going to be there. But I'm happy that our hope is not in this life. Amen. The sister is happy. I can tell you that. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. She's at a better place than we are now. We are not worried. As a matter of fact, you don't even think about when you think about the rapture. All of us know we want to make the rapture. The rapture should come right now. We want to, to make it up. Eh? But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15, verse 16 actually, for the Lord himself. Let me start from verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. That word prevent their means shall not go before them. So anyway you take it, the sister is in a good position. Amen. So we are, we are, we are here just to, I mean, just to honor the sister, but truly she probably looking over balcony saying, boy, I wish all of you could come up now because what I'm feeling, imagine this joy you're feeling now in this worship session and, and we're not physically, if you understand what I mean, to be in the presence of God. Praise God. So we're here to honor her life and we thank God for her and we don't have to cry. You know, she probably would say, don't, don't cry for me. I am in a better place than you are right now. I mean, if you cry, we understand human nature. But the truth of the matter is that she's in a better place. And we thank God for that. And if you're here today too, and you're not saved, you have not repented of your sins, you have not been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have the Holy Ghost, then if you should die, we can't say the same for you. Amen. But for Sister Marlene, we are grateful that she chose the better part in this life, that in the next life, <laughs> She'll be happy. We're going to have a eulogy reading from her daughter, sister, uh, Kadeen McLean. And um, after that, then Kadeen McLean. So we ask the to help me to move the podium down, please. And she's going to be reading a eulogy for her sister. But I Praise the Lord, everybody. To everything, there is a season, a time for matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to keep and a time to cast away. Marlene Barbara Hibbert was born June 29, 1966 of late Gwendolyn Welch and late Knute Hibbert and she was the ninth child 
of the nine children and she passed away on December 15, 2020 at the age of 54. It's hard to say goodbye. We wish we had more time and perhaps that during that time we had spent more of it together. We wish that so much of her life had not been lost to her illness, that things could have been different for her and for us. While we know that she is at peace and that her struggles are at an end, there is pain and sadness. But even though she is gone, she has left the legacy of her love and perseverance to fight to the end. She, she has shown us that the race is not for the swift, but for those who can endure. Sister Marlene attended Primacol High School when she first found she was pregnant with her first daughter. After giving birth, she started a new skill in dressmaking. Over the years, she has made a lot, not just curtains, sheet sets, and making or altering clothing pieces, but also microwave covers, toaster covers, mitten, oven mittens, dish towels, placemats, bags. Once it's made of material, she's able to make it. Fit and fiddle in her days of her youth, she was a great netball player. She played for her community in Waterhouse, and, she, and as she got older, she coached and refereed the matches. Even during picnic at church, she refereed netball matches. Sister Marlene, mommy, has two daughters, Carrie Ann Morrison and myself, Kadeen, and one son, Ordain Morrison. She has three granddaughters, Darian, Deshara, and Dior Morrison, two grandsons, Dazmir Morrison, Amari Grant, and one more on the way, Khalil Thompson, and as well as other relatives and friends. This family and her role as a child of God, mother and grandmother, this family and her role as a child of God, mother, and grandmother was the most important thing to mom. The church is where she grew her strength from and that left her legacy with her family. Being with her immediate family and the support of church family was what Sister Marlene enjoyed the most. Her life has many obstacles and she struggled for 13 years with a devastating illness. Yet through it all, her love for God and her family remained focused, her focus. This perseverance through adversity is a powerful lesson for us, and I believe in her legacy. Don't let distractions of this world keep you from the most important aspect of life, and that is to love and care for each other. Regardless, during her illness, she will never give up. And she also put herself aside to even give advice to fellow church brethren and witness to sinners. Sister Marlene Christian journey began June 1, 2008, when she was baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And she was filled with the Holy Spirit on her birthday, June 29, 2008. Later that year, December 2008, she was diagnosed with cancer, also in 2013 and 2019. But despite these diagnoses, her passion for Christ, her ministry in this church, and her fight for her life, she never gave up. She was and will continue to be inspired to all of us, inspiration to all of us. She will always quote when she was at home these scriptures. Isaiah 54 verse 17. 
no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Deuteronomy 28 verse 13, I am the head and not the tail. Psalms 18 verse 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Psalms 20 verse 7, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Romans 8 verse 37, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Job 13 verse 15, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Psalms 27 verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Thank you. Praise the Lord, buddy. Praise God. Another one of our brethren has gone home. Can I ask all the family members that are in the house, Mrs. Tabor, just to stand? All the family members, our daughters here. I'm not sure what all the relations are, but praise God. Can I ask the church just to? Look at their faces, note who they are, and let's give them a word of encouragement when the service is through. Everybody needs some encouragement, amen? And it's not easy to lose a loved one. I know what that's about. I know that the emotions are mixed, but God is still God, amen? And as the minister said earlier, she is in a better place. Praise God. Man that is born of a woman is of a few years and what? Listen to me now. She's in a better place. What's that? Man that is born of a woman few days full of trouble. But guess what? Jesus makes a difference all the difference in the life of that man amen and we just want to encourage the family members that richard bless you we will continue to remember our sister and we just continue to remember you in our prayers amen god bless you thank you you may be seated praise god it comes time to hear a word from the lord amen everybody's a word and we have a young man who is coming to minister to us today young minister Barnes and he's going to be coming to deliver a, a word that the Lord has laid on his heart can invite everybody to stand at this time it's all just stand to your feet and receive young minister Barnes as he comes to minister the word of the Lord to us. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Come on, say one more time in Jesus' name. Praise God. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just show that name that is above every other name? Hallelujah. Can we just show that name one more time? Jesus. Can we just show that name another time? Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Uh, wait a second. I just pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can we just kindly bow our heads? Great and merciful Father. King of kings and Lord of lords, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, we approach your throne one more time. 
and we want to bless your name and we want to give you thanks for your love and your mercies towards us lord we thank you god for our brother brother barnes lord jesus christ that will stand great god to present your word he stands between heaven and us we ask mighty god that you will grant him a touch an anointing touch lord jesus that will cause him to speak today as you would have it we ask you to cover him every whit we ask you to strengthen him every whit and to use him to accomplish your will today we pray, God, that as these words go forth, God, that you will minister to every heart. Save or unsaved, we pray that you'll minister to every heart. And we pray that when all is said and done, that you will receive the glory and that you will change life for your name's sake and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. While, while we are still standing, uh, I'd like for us to turn to the book of Matthew. Praise the Lord. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be reading a few portions of scriptures. So we'll begin at Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. And we'll also be reading from Matthew chapter 7. 5, verse 20, and it says, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, he shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm going over to Matthew chapter 7. Reading from verse 21. And it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful things? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Praise the Lord, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Really giving God thanks to be in his house one more time. And I pray that the Lord will just hold me and see me through. I really desire to do nothing less and nothing more than that which the Lord desires. In preparation for, you know, being here today, at the very onset, the very day that I got the word that I'm here, what came into my spirit was a sermon on the mount. And I kind of wondered what that was all about, even though I've gone through it before. But after reading, after much praying, you know, the Lord kind of really opened up my mind to some things that I really want to share with us today. And I pray that you will open up your hearts to be receptive of the word that will go forth. Hallelujah. So we'll be going through the sermon. We'll be going on the mountain today. Somebody say mountain. mountain. Praise the Lord. Uh, from Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it speaks to the sermon on the mount. Jesus talking to a group of persons and his disciples. And... Uh, we are so very much familiar because I want to just reason with us today. Uh, we're so very much familiar with the Beatitudes. And that's the first part of Matthew chapter 6. And uh, Beatitude means blessedness. 
and while going through and looking at this word so I just broke it down into two and from this word we get B and this means to have a specified qualification or characterization according to Miriam Webster and attitude which is a mental position with regard to a fact or a state so we have B and we have attitude and going through the Beatitudes what I realized that all that it speaks to or speaks about is about things that we are to be so it's not a one-off thing if we want to have a good career as whatever you know maybe a teacher a doctor a police a lawyer whatever the case might be it takes time you know and a part of that preparation is going to school and doing all the necessary studies right and so we see over the discourse in matthew it speaks to the type of persons that we are to be it speaks about the poor in spirit it speaks about the mourners it speaks about the meek it speaks of those about those who hunger and thirst after righteousness it speaks about the pure in heart it speaks about peacemakers it speaks about those who are persecuted it speaks about the reviled and it tells you just what will happen if you fall into this category and so these are the things that it implores us to be and if we look closely in Matthew chapter 5 sorry Praise the Lord. If we look closely at the scripture, at the end of it, it tells us, it gives us an instruction. After all these things that we are to be, here comes the attitude towards it. Because it tells us to rejoice. In five in 5 verse 12 it says rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you and I want to say that if we are to ever get to that place of righteousness that the Lord requires for us to be hallelujah there will be challenges there will be challenges but the scriptures implore us to rejoice and really what i want to focus on today maybe as a topic is to excel in righteousness hallelujah the scripture goes further to say that we are the salt of the earth we are the light of the world hallelujah praise the lord and uh, if we are the salt it, it, it speaks and says if the salt has lost its savor it's not good but to be thrown out i'm sure that some of us in the natural sense we we're cooking or we get something to eat and we're searching for a certain taste a certain flavor and if that flavor that taste is not there we cast it aside and even so it is with us we have to maintain that flavor that fragrance that the Lord is looking for and the scripture says that we ought to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees now these are persons that were versed in the law focused on the law hallelujah and it takes much more than the law to get to that place of righteousness that the Lord desires for us to be hallelujah in Luke chapter 12 verse 1 Jesus warned his disciples to beware of the leaving of the Pharisees and he says this is hypocrisy hallelujah praise the Lord and I will really touch back on that hallelujah in Romans chapter 10 verse 2 to 4 
It says that they have the zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. It says that they are ignorant of God's righteousness, and as such have gone to establish their own righteousness. Can I tell you that your own righteousness is not good enough? Hallelujah. We could not have redeemed ourselves or made ourselves righteous. Hallelujah. But the scripture says that for he hath made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. So we are only being made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The scripture goes on to tell us what manner of person we are to be. And we're going through Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Hallelujah. And it speaks about forgiveness. Hallelujah. And how we are to forgive. Hallelujah. And it says that we are not to revenge, take revenge when we are offended. Hallelujah. It encourages us to pray. Hallelujah. Even for those who would offend us. It goes and tells us to love our enemies. And at this point, the Lord Jesus was just debunking, you know, some of the precepts or some of the ways that the scribes and Pharisees would enforce on others. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the scripture speaks about the hypocrites. Hallelujah. In Matthew 6. And these are those who... When they're given anything, it says that they give their arms before men to be seen of men. Hallelujah. And they pray using vain repetition. repetition. And when they're fasting, they fast with a sad countenance. Hallelujah. And this is just the way that we ought not to be. As believers, hallelujah. This is the way that we ought not to be. The scripture says that when you do anything, man, you who gave in secret, your heavenly Father, hallelujah, he sees and he will reward you openly. So you don't need to go and tell the whole world what you have done for others. Hallelujah. For you're not doing it unto man, but as unto God. Hallelujah. When you're praying, there is no need for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord to seek to have any vain repetition hallelujah using words that i probably don't even understand just to sound good hallelujah just to appeal to others hallelujah but we have to have a contrite heart praise the lord the scripture says that we are to seek you first the kingdom of god and his righteousness it says that the lord knows what we have need of even before we ask him praise the lord it says that he clothed the lilies of the of the field he provides for the birds of the air the fowls of the air and how much more will your heavenly father provide for you hallelujah it says that these are the things that the gentiles seek after hallelujah when you surrendered your life to god hallelujah hallelujah you signed the contract to say that lord i believe that you will take care of me and it's not for me to take care of myself hallelujah yes there are times and it's a part of the process when you will be going through many a challenge hallelujah but it's just a part of the process hallelujah just as i said earlier when we have a particular career field that we decide that yes this is what i want to be there are challenges there are exams there are quizzes hallelujah and all sorts of things that we have to endure hallelujah and so there are some of us who have varying experiences along the way hallelujah some of us remember when we were without hallelujah never had anything at all but we kept on trusting god hallelujah and he made a way some of us might be at that point now when it requires everything in us to just keep trusting god but what can i tell you keep trusting god it shall not be in vain hallelujah 
though you may be on your very last hallelujah hallelujah some of us had the experiences when you would search the cupboard hallelujah and all that you find can't even make anything good you come up with your own recipe praise the lord hallelujah some of the times that's how it is praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah can i tell you that he will neither leave you nor forsake you no matter the stage that you are in god hallelujah just trust him somebody hallelujah remember when you used to trust god hallelujah people used to think you were crazy hallelujah as though you lost your mind hallelujah nobody could plant doubt in your mind but where is that faith that you used to have where is that trust that you used to have in the god that you used to talk about hallelujah wherever you would go some of the times we get thrown off track hallelujah by life circumstances but I want to implore to get back on track. Get back on that track of righteousness. Get back on that track of faith. Get back on the track of love. Get back on the track of peace. Hallelujah. Get back on the track of being meek and humble and lowly. Get back on the track of giving. Hallelujah. Without expecting to receive anything. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord hallelujah and the scripture goes on to tell us in matthew chapter 7 that we ought to enter at the street gate hallelujah and the narrow way and it says that there are only few just think about it in the numbers of us that are here today think about just a few of us maybe just 10 and it is saying that only just that few find it hallelujah through the street and the narrow the fiery trials must come but god he fears not hallelujah you can take him at his word hallelujah hallelujah the challenges and the trials are only but for a time hallelujah but don't sell out your righteousness for what this world has to offer get back to that place of real love real forgiveness hallelujah really trusting god as he desires it says broad hallelujah is the way and wide is the gate that leads to destruction hallelujah praise the lord can i tell you that the baggage of this world you can't go through the straight and narrow with it hallelujah the scripture implores us it says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Hallelujah. You have to learn the way of the peacemaker. Learn the way of the meek. Learn the way of those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. You can't hunger and thirst if you're already full. And it's about time that we ask the Lord to empty us. So we can hunger and thirst after him and be filled with the things that he desires for us to be filled with hallelujah hallelujah and even as we may see in the natural if i have a tiny little two foot door so to speak not everybody can go through it a fat man can't go through it, or a woman, or whoever the person might be. No matter how you put it up and say them chubby or what's the other words that they use nowadays. Hallelujah. No matter how you try to nice it up, you can't go through. You can't fit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
But what I want is when the Lord looks at me in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the baggage is gone. Hallelujah. You know, it takes a lot to walk with the burden of unforgiveness. And it doesn't even matter what the person did. From the Lord says that this is the requirement. There is no two way about it. into the kingdom of heaven hallelujah but he that doeth, doeth the will of god the lord says that you will know them by the fruit hallelujah we are to bear good fruit hallelujah so that when hallelujah hallelujah the time comes lord hallelujah he can see enter in hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah it's such a sad thing hallelujah because he says that hallelujah many will come and will say that they have prophesied and have cast out devils in his name and it says that but i this is the Lord will profess. I knew, I know you not. Remember when he sent out the disciples and they said, Lord, the spirit they obey us. He said, no, rejoice over that. But that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's the important thing. Yes, we ought to have dominion and authority on the earth. And we are to see the, ha, the manifestation, hallelujah. But much more than after all the manifesting is done. Is your heart right with God? What is God saying about you today? If he should give a recommendation, hallelujah. If he should say something on your behalf. What is it that the Lord would be saying about you today? Would he be saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or will he be saying, depart from me? I know you not. Yes, you're hanging around me, but I don't know you. Who are you? You're doing things in my name, but I don't know you. Remember the sons of Sceva. They go up to cast out devil. Say, who are you? I don't know you. Hallelujah. The scripture, Proverbs 14, 34 says, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. No two ways about that. In Romans chapter 6, 17 to 20 and i'm just going to read this it says 
But God be thanked that ye were the servants, were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men, giving an earthly example now, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanness and to, and to iniquity, unto iniquity. Even so now, yield your members, servants, to righteousness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free, hallelujah, from righteousness. But now you are the servant of God. We are to be slaves to righteousness. And before I close, I just want to give an example of something. For those of us who drive, we all know what a car is. Within a car, for a brake to operate, we have what is called a master cylinder. And it says that in automotive engineering, the master cylinder is a control device that converts force commonly or generally from a driver's foot into hydraulic pressure. It goes on to say that the device controls slave cylinders located at the other end of the hydraulic system. So you have the master cylinder. Once you press the brakes, fluid flows through the lines to the slave cylinders. Hallelujah. Can we get to that place where, hallelujah, when the Lord presses, hallelujah, through the master cylinder of righteousness, hallelujah, we can be as the slave cylinders that will respond. And the thing about the slave cylinder is they all work in unison. All four ways, once you touch the brakes. Equal pressure. Equal level of fluid. Hallelujah. Can it be that when the Lord knocks, we respond as he requires for us to respond? Some of the times, you might press the brake and you can't get a response. You go check the mechanic and him say, boy, you have to go bleed the brakes. Ear getting it. No brakes. Danger. And the thing about it, I was looking, the master cylinder is never what them bleed. Because the slave cylinders have a little valve that they used to bleed out the ear out the brake. Hallelujah. And if we can get to that place where he said, check me, Lord. If there is any ear in my cylinder, bleed out the ear, Lord. Bleed it out because I need to function. I want when you tap on the brakes, I can't stop. I don't want when the Lord says stop. We just go long, go long, go long, non-stop. Oh, God. Some of the time the Lord is speaking and he's saying, stop. Stop. But you're, you're, you're lying full of ear, man. Bleed out the line, Jesus. Because I ought to get to that place of righteousness that you desire. So when you press, hallelujah, I get an immediate response. Hallelujah. Bleed out the line, Lord. Hallelujah. So that my ways, hallelujah, will become as you are. Hallelujah. So that I can become more like you. Because at the end of the day, it's not about me. It says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? All the money in the world can't pay for your soul. You never even deserve it. And Jesus died for your sins. You owe it to him. 
some of the times we go out of our way. We reach our work early because we know say if we reach ten minutes after the boss of us. We clean out the place because we know we are gonna have visitor over. You wash your car because you know say you go on a journey and you invite people. And we just go before God just so. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the same God whose voice it says, Break it, the cedars of Lebanon. The same voice of our God that he says, Cause it the hinds to calm. And we're saying that, Lord, you are my light and my salvation. And we are dealing with him, so. It can't work. Let us get back in line and on track. On the road of righteousness. On the road of wholeness. Forget about what the world want to say. They only get fat. And fat people can't go through the straight and narrow. But remain in God. Hallelujah. Remain in God. In righteousness. No compromise. Hallelujah. No surrender. Forward still. Hallelujah. Forward still with Jesus. Holiness is still right. Righteousness is still right. Forgiveness is still right. Love is still right. Peace is still right. Joy is still right. Hallelujah. But you ought to remain on the straight and narrow. It says you ought to rejoice. Rejoice, man. Things are reached, but rejoice. You have to go through the process. It didn't reach other people. Remember, maybe there was a time when you search your whole house for your kind. I don't know if anybody ever do that. You search a spot already, you know you search it and you go search again. And you want to find a little money if you go buy two bull and drink some water and call it a day. You used to trust God them way, then I said, boy, God, this alone may have, but may I trust you in a coming. No way you're going to deliver me. What am I doing now? We shelve with faith. We shelve with righteousness. And a compromise. The song, I can't even sing, but the song says, All them other gods. Works of men. We serve the most high God. And we ought to get in line and be in unison. Let us join together in faith. Join together in righteousness. And let us be at the place that the Lord desires for us to be. The hardship you're going through is only for a season. Trust me. Yes, you came to the Lord and you gave up so much. We know that you could have the nicest things or whatever name brand. And you say, Lord, we give this up for you. Don't go back now. You say, only the dog returned to him vomit, man. And we don't eat vomit. Right? We want to be a good fruit. You can't imagine if Jesus come here a fruit tree and I look for something. Can't find nothing. No one, when him come on my fruit tree, pick, choose, and refuse everything there. Full your belly, Jesus. Oh, I'm to you, man. We are joking, man. Shut up, man. I'm too rough, man. Sure. We don't remember neither man a buy woman. We are going like we don't read the Bible, so we are ramp with God, so man.
Take stock of your life, man. Nobody not going to do it for you. We get too much trouble sometimes, man. We have to learn for your beer. I'm to you, man. Obey, man. See word, obey, man. We are in scripture at 9 o'clock. And we have to obey it, too, man. Jesus. 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 You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You, you who Christ died for, you whom he called, and he has been knocking over and over again. Let us lay the petty things aside. Let it be that when our faith and when our lives is tried with fire, it will be able to stand. Stand. As gold tried in the fire. Even so, let our lives be able to stand. Let us not be as the shaft with the wind drive it away. And the things that when the fire comes, it catch a fire. And it's no more. Hallelujah. Unsave. This is for you. Hallelujah. There is no other place to be than with Jesus. You know that in this world you've tried so many things and you still have not been filled. Hallelujah. Try Jesus and try him today. Try him now. Lord bless you, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Can you better stand? Lift your hands and just meditate on his word. And we make a fresh commitment today to be holy as he is holy. To walk righteously as he desires for us to walk. It's the word of the Lord today. Simple but profound word.
Praise God. To praise God. If you're here today and you'd like to make a fresh commitment, I invite right where we are. We're just about a few minutes from the close of this, this service. It will be so good before we leave just to, to make a new commitment. To the living God. If you're going to make a new commitment, if you're willing to make a new commitment, a fresh commitment to the Lord, let me say amen. I invite you to just bow your head right where you are. No more, just bow your head, close your eyes. We're going to unite in prayer. Let me just invite Minister Boucher. Brother Boucher, come. He's just going to lead us in prayer. And everyone, we're, going, we're all going to pray. Before we close, let's just make a commitment to God to walk holy. To find and abide in the perfect will of God for our lives. Many of us might not know clearly what the will of the Lord is. But even if you don't know clearly and see clearly all that the will of God is for my life, you can identify one single will, one, that you can strive for. And that is to live holy. Amen. Amen. Brother Bush is going to lead us in prayer before we close. Praise him, praise him. Let's just lift your hands, everybody, everywhere. Hallelujah. Let's worship God. Let us, let us thank him before we go any further for his words. Let's just thank him for his words and let's worship him. Hallelujah. Not out of ritual, not because I ask you. But let us just spend a few moments and let's worship God. Hallelujah. Everybody, everybody, let's lift your hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're omnipotent. You're large. Hallelujah. You're exalted. You're our Lord. We bow at your feet. Hallelujah. Worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your sweet presence, for your sweet words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask us, everybody, everywhere, to just unite in prayer. Praying for the unsaved among us, even those that are tuning in, pray that, that they have a repentant heart. We're going to pray also for the backsliders among us, hallelujah, that they will make it right. And we're going to pray for ourselves as individuals, that we will measure up to the word of God, that we will measure up to his expectation, that when we leave here today, we leave transformed. We don't want the words to go through one ear and go through the other. No. We want it marinated in our soul. So when it's all said and done, we're going to pray for ourselves. So let's pray for the unsaved among us, for the backsliders, and let's pray for ourselves that we'll measure up to the word and to the expectation of God in a consistent way. Let's bow our heads and let us all pray and touch God unitedly. Everybody, everywhere. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence that we have felt in this place. We thank you for your anointing, for your visitation, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for residenting with us today and for tabernacling with us. We thank you, Lord, for your words that have gone forth, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that your words will find a place in our heart. 
I pray, oh God, today that your words will find a place in every unsaved heart hearing us and those, even those who are viewing us wherever they are, Lord. I pray that your words will find a place in their hearts, oh God Almighty. I pray, Lord, for every backsliders, even for those who are on the verge of backsliding, that you'll grab a hold of them, Lord, and you'll turn them around, and you'll transform them, Lord, today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, I pray for every one of us today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will help us to humble ourselves and to measure up to your words, to your expectation. I pray, Lord, that your words will digest in our soul. Let it marinate in us, Lord, not just for this moment, but throughout the day and throughout the week. Hallelujah. Let it marinate in us. Let it grow. Let it bring forth fruits, Lord God, so that you can be satisfied with our lifestyle. Bless us. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Help us to be truthful in the inward parts. Help us to humble ourselves before you, the mighty hand of God. Have mercy on us and sanctify us. Wash us afresh, Lord God. Make us whole, Lord Jesus Christ. Make us whole. Have mercy upon us, Lord. And as we go, Lord, to our separate place, I pray for journey mercies. Whether we drive, whether we take the bus, or we walk, I pray, oh God, that your covering will be upon us, God. And I pray, oh God, that you touch our minds and help us, God, to meditate on your words. Oh, Jesus, I pray, Lord, it will stay in our heart. We will hide it in our heart that we might not sin against you. Bless us, Lord, and keep us and grant journey mercies. And let your hands be upon us, Lord. Every one of us, every unsaved, every backslider, every distress, every discouraged, every brethren, have your own sweet way as we ask these and more. In Jesus' name, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your covering. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.